you know, personally speaking, I think I'm still, I'm still learning and watching and keeping my eyes open as what else can I do? Uh, is there going to be a chip uh, inserted in my body sometime to kind of inform me about everything? So I am the thing then, you know, uh, I'm already using the, uh, the watch to uh, get me a ton of uh, feedback about uh, my body and my sleep patterns and all that. So those things are very important and very revolutionary. I'm just wondering what next? Is it going to be an exponential step or is it going to be an incremental step of evolution for, for people like me and, and generally speaking? Hi, my name is Robert Schmidt, Deloitte's Chief IoT Technologist. Today on my show Coffee with Mr. IoT, I have Ravi Asrani. You are the SVP of Global Partnerships, is that right? Yeah, Global uh, Strategic, uh, you know, rather the SI community and Management Consulting community. Uh, I don't own all the partnerships, but only the segment of these partnerships within PTC. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, it's actually funny. Often I have guests that I don't know as well as I know you, and I know their title, <laughs> and then here we sit and start talking about your title. So, well, welcome to the show. We work Thank a lot you. together. We do. Um, you are uh, responsible for the alliance between Deloitte and PTC. Yes. Um, PTC is so many things. Tell us who is PTC? Yeah. So I think uh, 35 years back, if this question was, would have been thrown to our executive leadership, uh, we would have been, uh, a, you know, a CAD or maybe in the recent years, till about 10 years back, would have been a PLM company doing well. But today, I think we're at the forefront of digital transformation, a company that is talking about transforming the landscape of its entire customers that are looking to go become digital success, successful companies. I think we're at the forefront of that transformation. And thanks to partnerships like yours, we're able to deliver that value and outcome. Uh, so th that's what PTC is. I mean, we're a company that is executing digital transformation with help from you uh, and giving partners, the, uh, the customers, the opportunity to go transform themselves. Um, but before I even go deeper on this, I want to first thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I've seen a lot of your past shows and I'm, uh, I think it's an honor and a privilege to be invited here. So thank you for that. Well, it's great to have you. We always want guests. So if you want to be on the show, uh, <laughs> please write us. There is an email. I think it's up in the corner here or here. But, you know, we can fix that. Um, please join us. And um, I love sitting here with you, Ravi. How Thank long you. have we known each other? Um, we've, this is my ninth quarter in the company. So we've known each other for nine quarters. Uh, and but yeah, you inherited our relationship, right? I did. I did. It, it actually came to us from our... Um, earlier CTO, erstwhile CTO, Andy, Tim, and a couple other people that helped, you know, put uh, this structure to this partnership uh, together. So, yeah, I inherited a lot of the good stuff that was going on. And when I got here, I was blown away with turnkey IoT. I mean, nobody was thinking of, people were thinking about IoT, let alone turnkey IoT. So, yeah, very excited, blown away by what this stood for. So you manage not just the relationship between Deloitte and PTC, but you manage um, you manage actual system integrators. Do you manage other people too? Yeah. What, what kind of relationships do you yeah. actually manage? So we have a portfolio of about 20, 25, um, you know, global SIs and management consulting firms, uh, which include, um, you know, um, Deloitte, McKinsey, uh, and a couple others uh, in, you know, Boston Consulting, KPMG, EY. Um, uh, and a little bit of Accenture that does the strategy consulting part. So that's essentially our portfolio of management consulting. And then also we have Downstream, which is Global SIs, which again include Deloitte Digital as well, Accenture, TCS, Wipro, Infosys, uh, NTT, Data, and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's about 20 plus 5. That's the group of portfolio of partners that we run. Um, uh, it's uh, When I started in the company, um, we had 125, which landed up to 145 partners. And what, 200 partners? 145 partners, 145. which started at 115, 120, became 145. And we really took a hard look at what our partnerships, what we mean to our partners, what our partners mean to us. And can we carve out something of a very unique and a strategic partnership with the guys, the big boys in the business? 
and uh, this does not mean to say that the other partners are not important there's very important and close to our heart there is a business unit that caters to them which does the one to many relationships which is the solution provider relationships uh, business unit so they run a bulk of those we run the big boys uh, in the industry so to speak so I don't know the exact numbers, but I do know we won against uh, all the other ones last year in yes. terms of volume and revenue, which yeah. I'm quite proud of and happy of. Number one, worldwide Thank you. IoT partner, worldwide for PTC. So what makes our relationship special? I, I, I know people always talk about partnerships and relationships, but yeah. if you could pick a few things like specific yeah. nuggets, what do you think makes our relationship special? Sure. I think um, the like you said, right? I mean, you rightly said, I acquired this relationship when I came in. Um, the, um, when you look at a lot of the other portfolio of partners that we have, they have some specific skills in execution and downstream. Some of them have capabilities around strategy consulting, blueprinting, lighthouse projects, and they do both of those segments really well. I think Deloitte is probably the chosen set of partners that actually spans that entire spectrum extremely well. Uh, right from blueprinting all the way down to execution um, and understanding. So that's one thing that differentiates Deloitte very well. Um, the maturity that I've seen from Deloitte, uh, whether you look at yield calculators, ROIs, across a spectrum of uh, you know trying to do IoT on-prem in a private cloud has so many facets. It's like five or seven layers before a solution is implemented and executed. It just blew my mind that Deloitte had all of those aspects, parameters very clear before they talked to a customer. They were not discovering it on the fly, figuring out what your needs are, Mr. Customer, but you're actually telling the customer, here is what you really need, here is how we can help you do this. That is very refreshing, that's very unique. Um, number three is, with a lot of partners, and again, I mean no disrespect to any of my partners, um, we have a lot of business plans with partners. Uh, Deloitte, we've executed an execution that has gone so well, and now we're talking about a business plan. And not that the business planning process is not important, it is, but it tells you that there was so much merit in executing without a plan when the opportunity was so active and hot. Um, and Deloitte just did that. We took, we took your lead and we just went with the flow and, and here we are, I mean, number one partner in uh, the second year, I think. The first year really didn't have anything technically. Uh, but yeah, by all means. So I think these are very unique about Deloitte that I don't see other partners. I think there's uh, a lot of partners will aim to be as special as Deloitte is to PTC, for sure. I have to tell you the thing that always I think of when I think of, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to leave technical expertise and stuff out, mm. but the one thing I've always enjoyed is that I can pick up the phone and call anybody. I can call you, yeah. or I can call uh, Jim Hippelman for that matter, yeah. and he happens or to call me here and there too, <laughs> which is always like, uh, okay, yeah. um, so that's the CEO of PTC. But I think there's just a transparency and yeah. a willingness to work with us that I find special, and yeah. there's just no attitude between us, and I really, really appreciate that. So thank Absolutely, you. And, and you will see that uh, from everybody at PTC towards Deloitte for sure. Yeah, it's been great. So, um, you came from somewhere else. Yes. Um, I, I know you, when we talked earlier, you said you had an interesting sort of story why you yeah. wanted to shift from where you were to PTC. Do you mind sharing that with us? No, no, absolutely. So, um, I came from Hitachi, Hitachi Data Systems. But interestingly, I used to work a lot with uh, Deloitte there, trying to partner with you guys sometimes, and Hitachi was a big customer of Deloitte, uh, even in Japan. I worked with them. And you worked with them as, uh, as well. Great guys. Uh, uh, great guys, yeah. Great guys and so, girl cows, actually, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, um, so I was part of this uh, team that was responsible for running our SI, you know, a small unit or portfolio of our SI business. Um, ran that really well for about six, six and a half years. I started as an individual contributor um, in the private cloud, you know, infrastructure, storage, backup, compute, archive, the whole nine yards. Um, and um, in 2009, I used to work for um, uh, a services global SI consulting company that competes with Deloitte today. Um, and there was a there was a new partner that wanted to par sign an agreement with. I'm just going back one step. That wanted to partner with uh, uh, this company, and that company said, "Hey, you know, uh, we offer something very unique um, in the market. We can do." 
uh, and this company was Amazon. This company said, we can partner uh, with you, Mr. SI. And th when, I was, when I was an alliance manager, individual contributor, um, and offer compute as a service in 2009, and we can scale from three to 3,000 servers. And in my head, I was thinking, I mean, this has got to be a joke. I mean, who needs 3,000 servers? Why would anybody want to scale? You know, let's start with three servers, right? So needless to say, OK, no problem. Come on in. We'll sign an agreement, get a partnership going. And I left to join Hitachi in 2010. I still remember it was May 27th, uh, 2010. Signed that agreement, sent it to Amazon. OK, you and this company are partners. And you know, good luck. And little did I know that this company that you know sells books online, uh, sells uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, and toothpastes, and so on and so forth, you know, household stuff, would come in to dominate the infrastructure market in such a way that all these global giants and behemoths would fall. And we were doing really well at Hitachi, even you know, the alliances organization, and so on and so forth, um, and. Come 2016, 2017, you start losing market share and, and so on and so forth, and everything's moving to the cloud. And I saw that very clearly. And I said, mm -hmm. IoT and AR and AI and ML are such, and cloud is, are such unique opportunities. We're going to have an Amazon moment again. And if I'm not part of that moment, then I'm going to regret this opportunity myself. So that's why, even though we were doing really well and I was, you know, I was running my little business. Uh, decided to exit and come to PTC to be part of something very revolutionary and exciting, which I'm, you know, which we're going to see soon, if not. So already. you're telling me that PTC is the new Amazon? Uh, for the digital transformation portfolio, yeah, sure. It's fascinating, right? I mean, if you look at PTC and where they came from, you talked about product lifecycle management, PLM, particularly CAT, you know, drawing to all the way what happens now. There's sort of like this whole idea that. Um, through sensors and the Internet of Things, you can connect with the product from its inception, like on paper, to when it gets built, to then when it's with the customer, to all the way when it gets disposed. It's a fascinating concept if you think that you can yeah. follow the product all the way and yeah. so forth. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And we were able to do it electronically, right? I mean, software allowed us for a long time to follow and see what people do with software, but now we can do it with physical, like, you know, yeah. Yeah. hard... Uh, Items, so yeah. that's really awesome. Uh, Things uh, that is uh, absolutely. I think as uh, Jim says it, and, and this is the analogy that uh, you know brought uh, tears of joy to my eyes when I heard it the first time. And he said, PLM is IoT. And for the longest time, uh, when we thought product lifecycle, PLM was product lifecycle management. But when the product goes out in the market, is not able to give you feedback. That feedback loop is incomplete. And because of IoT, now you connect that thing with sensors, make them chatty. In comes back the product feedback, and you're able to really manage that life cycle. And that, I mean, I was like a boy in a candy store the moment he did this whiteboard for me. I was, and everybody in the room was blown away. So I think it takes a genius to make uh, things really simple, and, and that's what he does. Nice. So uh, bringing stuff to life, I always think of one of the key things we work towards. Uh, between PTC and Deloitte is LiveWorks. Yes. It's the show that uh, you bring a lot of things to life and we bring a lot of things to life. It's in June. When is it exactly? Uh, it's in June. Uh, the dates are, I'm losing the dates in my head right now, but yeah, it's in, uh, yeah, it's in June. Monday, Tuesday. It's not well, we'll be add that day. down below, but um, yeah. it's in June. It's in Boston. And um, we're going to all be at uh, the show that uh, PTC puts on. Yep. Things come to life, as you said. Yeah. We get to see it. Uh, can you tease us a little bit what we're going to see this year at LiveWorks? Yeah. I think this year, I'm told, it's probably going to be by far the biggest uh, LiveWorks that we see. And I think uh, you've already been Pinnacle sponsors three times in a row. It's, it's fantastic. We're looking forward to that again. Number four. Um, but. Uh, it's expected to be the largest in mean, upwards of 7,000 people, um, you know, 100 uh, plus partners that will be there across the spectrum, strategic, you know, tactical, what have you. Um, and I am looking forward to a, a lot of uh, very cool demos uh, uh, by uh, the man himself, Jim. Uh, plus, um, I think we'll get to see a, a lot of action on the floor, especially the one that uh, you're teasing us about. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be big. It's going to be really big this time.
uh, I remember the time, sorry, just to one data point. I remember people used to tell me that it used to be 500 people that would come here. And now we're growing to about 7,000. Uh, I think it makes it the industry's, uh, an industry event versus a PTC event now. I think that's fun. That's awesome. I heard actually that you're taking up more space this year. Yes, we are. Um, there's yeah. more space of the Boston Convention Center being yes. taken up. Yeah. And um, uh, my team is already poking me what we're going to do this year because last, two years ago we had a owl flying across the stage. Last year we had the biggest uh, augmented reality uh, installation on stage. And most people have seen, absolutely. 40 feet long. That's huge. Yeah. I still, you know, I still carry the mark, unlike the big one, but I still carry a, a mid-sized version with me when I go so I can show people the <laughs> rubber duck factory or as it's called online, the virtual factory by Do Deloitte. Are you, are you able to talk about what, you're, what you guys are thinking about doing this year? Um, all I'm going to say is we're working on an amazing um, in, and even better augmented reality experience. Okay. Um, we're really going to take uh, what we do with our clients to another level to okay. really show it and have you experience it. I'm really about, there's something about, uh, I believe that people need to experience it. Yeah. Uh, you can't just tell them, they need to have a feeling about it and that really carries on. So yeah. we're really extending on that. And um, you know, it wouldn't be us if we wouldn't have a little bit of fun too. Yeah, so absolutely. I think the, you know, you should expect a lot less and a lot more. And hmm. I'll explain later what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so very, very excited about and looking forward to seeing you on stage again this year. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be very much fun. So tell me a little bit about Internet of Things. You know, where, where are you going to go with that? What's, what's really up for you next in terms of this Internet of Things movement? And what are the next big things that you're thinking of strategically? Uh, I would probably have very limited uh, knowledge to be candid with you on uh, what we're thinking of next in terms of product and, and design and roadmap. But uh, I think the number one charter for everybody at PTC is to make sure that the uh, the product portfolio and the value that customers are getting is is uh, scaled up. It, it is proliferated across all the specific verticals that we're going after. So I think this is the, in, in my view, like I was mentioning the Amazon moment, I think this is the moment that over the next three to five years, we're going to see an exponential rise uh, expectedly with uh, our um, the, the base that we're going behind. Uh, I think it's about, we know the market, we know the opportunity. It's about just going and executing hard. And I think that's what we are focused on. We're focused on executing hard for our long range plan uh, all the way up to 2023. That's awesome. So one of the things I always like to find out is what does IoT mean for you at home? For me, IoT is, um, I had two, um, two realizations. One was uh, with the Nest thermostat and um, it was fun. I've never really, un I mean, beyond just plugging devices into the GFI outlets, I've really not done much of playing around and trying to see what I can do with, uh, with the things around. So I'm pretty uh, dumb with things, but I was actually impressed because I took out the temperature sensor that I had to set temperatures and I went in and plugged the Nest myself. And uh, that's when the digital transformation sort of kind of got real for me. And this was almost uh, two and a half, three years back. Um, so, and the power of uh, what I generally, the internet of things was, was more real where I could control everything. Today now, I've gone ahead and put uh, um, an IoT and a weather sensible um, um, sprinkler in my backyard. So I've done, so now I'm beginning, beginning to become more and more active playing around things, tinker, tinkering around with opportunities. Uh, I put in sensors in my garage with lights that only sense motion and then get active, so saving time of. So those kind of things uh, are, for me, in small, minuscule ways, oh, I'm trying to digitally transform a very analog lifestyle that we had. Um, but, uh, you know, um, outside of that, you know, personally speaking, I think I'm still, I'm still learning and watching and keeping my eyes open as what else can I do? Uh, is there going to be a chip uh, inserted in my uh, body sometime to kind of inform me about everything? So I am the thing then, you know, uh, I'm already using the, uh, the watch to uh, get me a ton of uh, feedback about uh, my body and my sleep patterns and all that. So those things are very important and very revolutionary. 
I'm just wondering what next? Is it going to be an exponential step or is it going to be an incremental step of evolution for, for people like me and, and generally speaking? I've noticed that um, for a while I watched my sleeping patterns and I got more worried about my sleeping than I was before. And I didn't sleep as well anymore, so I stopped looking at my sleeping <laughs> patterns and focused more on my activity <laughs> patterns during the day. So, <laughs> you know, I, I have been doing a little bit of study on, you know, sleep uh -huh. and uh, how do you sleep better. And, uh, it, it, you know, these are all things that I've kind of read off of based on the topic of something. I like the subject of sleeping. Um, 65 degrees, uh, uh, black dark curtains, mm -hmm. uh, no blue light. So try and keep your phone away from the room that you sleep in, no electronics. If you do these three things, you are assured a very, very healthy sleep cycle. Uh, but it's very difficult. These are, I mean, we are all married to our phones, aren't we, in some way, or, or our devices. So, yeah. Okay, so let me get this straight. Um, I do 70 or 72, so 65. Strike one. Okay, I'm gonna look at that. Um, blackout. Okay, I, Black I can dark do curtains. Some of that. Okay, and then do, do they are they supposed to open at a certain amount of time or no? Yeah, whenever you wake up, whenever your alarm goes up, uh, goes off, that's when you wake up, and then you can okay. do whatever you want to do. And then no phone next to me. No phone. Well, my and problem though is that's my. I have like this alarm. I have like a nightstand screen that actually is listens to my voice. Does that count as a phone? I have to put that away too? No, I think if, if that's it's the your, phone itself. I think the phone itself and in mm, electronic okay. devices, you know, laptops, if you have them in your vicinity, uh, it's the surest way to kill your sound sleep. And I think more and more as we start aging and the more and more people start getting stressed, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, think, uh, I think the root cause is not getting enough sleep in my view. So, yeah. I'm going to try this. I'm going to move my phone charger away from my bed stand and move it somewhere else. It okay. has to be an effort for you to go pick it up and that's when things change. So, Very cool. That's good advice. Thank sure. you. Yeah. So one of the yeah. other things we want to do and one of the things I'm starting is I just had um, did this for the first time with my previous guest Sarah Cooper from AWS. Mm -hmm. um, we do a little drone uh, test. Have you ever watched Top Gear? Many so years they back. do like a race every time, right? Yeah. And so we are kind of timing, um, taking off, flying through this and coming back. Are you up for that? Sure. Yeah, it does. And then if you push this up, then it goes up. Okay. If you push it down, it goes down. So I'm gonna come down a little bit because I gotta go. And then if you push forward, it goes forward. Now I gotta go down a little, right? Yeah. Nice. Now I'm gonna turn around. I can actually see where I'm going, look, but I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna come back through it. <laughs> and I'm going to land it now. Ah, a little forward. Nice. Okay, did I beat my record? What it was, how long was it last time? 37 seconds. Oh my God. How did I do that? That's crazy. 37? Uh, okay, so. Too much. Oh. Battery came out. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, that it's is okay. Good. Is it the crash. first one? Is it the first time ever? It did crash. It's exciting. It's a good video. <laughs> if you don't want to go, just go a little easy with pushing forward and so forth. Yeah. Little, yeah, exactly. Just a little input, right and left. Uh, see, look at you. And now the left side go down a little bit. Just pull a little bit down. Yep. Look at you. Oh now turn around. <laughs> Almost. Well, you can take off again from there. Oh, you can? Yeah. Just make it back to the table. <clears throat> 
Far too long. 136. With the with the <coughs> drop, did you stop the counter I at the drop? Stop as soon as it's the ground. Start it again as soon yeah. as it starts. Thank you. I am at least 60 seconds behind you. Yeah, you did great. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. It was great having you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you again. Appreciate the opportunity to come in and talk to you. Oh, anytime. It's fun. I remember we recorded once together at LiveWorks, and we'll see each other again in Boston, I'm sure. And otherwise, that's our show coming to an end. Uh, thank you for watching Coffee with Mr. IoT and Ravi Asrani from PTC. And for another episode, tune in next Friday. Have a good one. Bye. How do you know um, that your friend that sent you an email that that sent you an email uh, is a Buddhist? I don't know how do you know. Because it came without attachments. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh,